We are starting a new series today, and we'll be talking the next three weeks about unlikely heroes of the Bible, or people that aren't quite as, as famous in the Bible. In our culture, we often focus on the person that's bigger than life. You know, we focus on the person of incredible power, the person that has amazing genius, the person who has enormous wealth. But there's also a tradition in our culture of the team, right? Of the, of the two working together. I mean, if I say Watson, you would say Holmes. That's right, you would say Sherlock Holmes. If I said, what's that? Crick. Watson and Crick. Oh, okay. Well, you're a scientist. That's, you know, that's, that's all right. That's all right. How about if I said Tonto? All right, we can tell we got that crowd that watch TV. <laughs> or if I said Ed McMahon. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Or uh, how about Robin? <laughs> You're just going to give me a hard time today, are you? That's all right. <laughs> Batman. Or how about or Bert and... Ernie, Ernie, yeah, we got these, we got these duos. You know, there's the, the hero, they're the main person, and then there's kind of the sidekick. And so today, I want to talk about the person who may very well have been the first sidekick. Aaron, Moses' brother. Moses and Aaron. The, the phrase Moses and Aaron, I mean, that particular phrase shows up in the Bible 73 times. And there's even more times where it's not directly Moses and Aaron, but it's like Moses went, Aaron followed, you know, so there's even more. There's probably about 100 or 125 times where Moses and Aaron appear together. And, and it's kind of ironic that Moses gets so much more attention than Aaron because Aaron was the public speaker, right? Aaron is the one that stepped out front. Aaron is the one that kind of put his neck more on the line. But that's the way it was. Moses was the main guy. But the thing is, is Moses would not have gotten very far without Aaron. I mean, the truth is, is that Moses would not have gotten anywhere without his older sister. That's a part of the story that we tend to forget. You know, if Miriam hadn't kept an eye on that basket in the river and made sure it got to Pharaoh's daughter, Moses could have just ended up in the Mediterranean somewhere. So Moses, you don't have Moses without Miriam. And I would say you don't have Moses without Aaron. The interesting thing about the way this story starts to me is that Moses objects that he can't go and talk to the people. He can't go and talk to Pharaoh. He says to God, I can't do this. You know, I'm slow of speech. I'm not a good public speaker. I can't do this. And God says to him, Moses, who do you think gave people the gift of speech? Who do you think made people? The implication, of course, is that God could just say, your, your stutter is gone. You know, your fear of public speaking is gone. I will take that away from you, Moses. But Moses can't quite get there. He can't quite believe that that's going to be true. And the beautiful thing in this story is that God then doesn't say, okay, you don't have enough faith to trust me that I can make you a great public speaker. Bye, we'll get somebody else. No, he says, if you're still afraid, if you need help, your brother will help you. You'll still be the guy. I'll still talk to you. You'll still be the one that gets to lead the people out of Egypt. Even though you can't do this on your own, I will send your brother to help you. And the beautiful thing is, is Aaron goes out there into the middle of nowhere to meet him. I mean, think about this. Think about Aaron's love for his brother. Moses kills an Egyptian. You know the story. Moses kills an Egyptian, so he has to run off into the desert because he's a man with a bounty on his head. And he's gone for years and years and years. And his brother Aaron is still thinking about him, 
So when God says to Aaron, Aaron, go and meet Moses, it's not, there's no argument. There's no, uh, you know, he's a wanted man. You know, he disgraced the family. Aaron just goes out and meets him. And then together, they're able to come back. And they're able to bring the message to the Israelite people that God still cares about them. And if you read the story carefully, you see that the signs, you know, the signs, the little miracles, Aaron does them. Because Moses is still kind of getting his feet on the ground. See, I think Moses had a little bit of trouble living into his role. Because if you read the way the story goes, we always tend to think, okay, so Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh, and Aaron's the speaker, but Moses is the guy with the miracles, right? Moses is the guy, he has his staff, he throws his staff on the ground, it turns into a snake. The truth is, though, is Moses isn't quite there yet the first time they go to see Pharaoh. Aaron is the one that throws his staff down. He's not just a speaker. He's the one doing the first sign. In fact, he does the first two. Then Moses kind of gets into the groove. But see, without Aaron, without Aaron to give Moses strength, without Aaron to give Moses confidence, it doesn't go anywhere. Moses gets the big press. But without Aaron, he can't, do, he can't really do much of anything. At the Red Sea, it's true, Moses takes the lead, right? Moses is the one that goes down to the water. We don't hear much about Aaron there. So we think, all right, Moses is, he's now, he's taken, taken it into his own. But see, the thing is, is even then, it's not from then on that it's just about Moses. Because the next big trouble that they have, when the Amalekites attack the Israelites, you might remember this story. Moses is out, and as long as he's standing up on the hill with his arms up, the Israelites win. But if he gets tired, droops his arms, the Israelites start to lose. Well, you, you, you probably know how this story goes. Who holds his arms up? Who's there for him? Who figures this out so that the Israelites can be saved? But Aaron. Aaron was always there for Moses. Aaron was always there for the people. But the thing is, is Aaron was, he was, you know, he was in the second chair. He was never the guy who was totally out front. It's always Moses and Aaron. Well, except there was this one time. There was this one time when it was just Aaron. And it didn't end very well. You remember Moses is up on the mountain. He's getting the, he's getting the words from God. Aaron's down with the people. The people start thinking, hey, Moses is gone. What are we going to do? How about a little golden calf, Aaron? And see, this is the thing. Aaron had a lot of gifts. Aaron had a lot of skill. Great public speaker, deep faith. But apparently, Aaron was not the one that could stand up to others. Moses is the one that did that. That's why he was the leader. And so Aaron makes them a golden calf. And I love the line, Moses comes back down the mountain and he's like, Aaron, what are you doing? And Aaron's like, well, you know, the people said that I should make them some kind of a god and I gathered up all their gold and I threw it in the fire and the calf popped out. I don't know. So he had his limitations. But when he recognized his limitations, he was the force behind Moses. He was the one that enabled Moses to do the work, to get things done, to speak the truth. And so at the, at the end of the day, he becomes the first priest, the first priest in the, in the nation of Israel, and passes that on down to his descendants. And the interesting thing is, is, you know, there's nobody else like Moses later on. In fact, the people are waiting. They're waiting for somebody like Moses to show up all through Israelite history. But they always have priests. They always have an Aaron. They always have somebody that's there to help them connect with God. Somebody that's there to help encourage. And that continues on even through the time of Jesus. And so in the story from the gospel today, even Jesus says to the man whom he heals, go show yourself to the priest 
so there will be a testimony. Go show yourself to the priest so that people will be encouraged and see that God is at work. The, the ministry of Aaron, the ministry of encouragement. And so when Aaron died, the people mourned for 30 days. They missed Aaron. They knew that a part of their life was gone from them. They mourned him, but they also remembered him. And as the priest continued to minister, that ministry of encouragement continued. And it even, encourage, it even continues among us that we can be Aaron to one another, speak the truth, give the encouragement, be there. Just be there. Thanks be to God.